Welcome back to part three of this mini EQing series. I added a snare and I added a clap. We're going to start doing opposite EQing for stuff that layers, um, like anything that plays at the same time. That way they hit more cleanly and they're really not interfering with each other. So let's listen to this kick, see it on the spectrum. We'll just go on the chant, actually. Solo. Get an EQ. So you could see snare. They're overlapping. So what you need to do is figure out, okay, the big area of my kick is down here. So below 100, my snare should have no business in it. And then you want to also pay attention to the hi-hats. So about right here in the 10,000 to, uh, what is this, two, three, four thousand, four to 10,000, the symbols are really picking that up. So what I'm going to do is just knock this down two decibels just to give it room for the hi-hat. And now for the snare, or the clap and snare, you're going to want to do the same thing again. So the clap looks like it has a big presence down here. So now I'm going to really take that emphasis, it, emphasize it, um, and then cut down again below 100. But now I need to look at my snare. So about that 200 range is where it's peaking up here. So I'm going to cut even more out because that clap's going to fill in down there, which we have to look at again. And then that 200 range, you're going to want to dip this a bit just because that's where that other snare is going to go. And then again, let's look at the high ends. So it has about 1,000 up. It has a lot. And I kind of just want that in the background, so about 1,000 uh, plus, we're going to dip down. And then, because of the hi-hats, to about 4,000, we'll go about right there. So now it's more of a layer with the snare. And uh, at the end, it seems like it's kind of not as present, it's dull. And then what you could do now, since we learned about the mid-side EQing in the last one, you can notice that you kind of want that snare, or the clap, to kind of be wider out here. And then kind of just take it all out, so... And that gives it a little more, uh, you can hear it just kind of like, now it's that clap kind of just feels like it's on top, uh, but only in the highs. The kick and snare is going to have a big problem too, so what you're going to want to do is kind of pay attention. So right about, uh, where's the one on? 46. You can see that the sub's hitting lower, and then over here when it switches going about there so right in that 46 range just do a little notch and then 
just boost it back up down there. And all of these are just subtle EQing things. And most of the time, it's just minor detail differences because and when you start adding layers and effects and stuff, it's a, it's going to start filling it up more and more. So all those cuts are going to be more and more valuable in the long run. But they're small right now because we really don't know. We're only doing what we have, you know, on our hands right now. Some elements may need to be cut more or less in the long run when we see what other frequency areas we're working with uh, for our whole track. This is just a little loop in the beginning. So in the next one, video, um, I might as well just put it as part four of this mini uh, mix series. I guess we'll label it. Uh, but anyways, it's going to be on anchor mixing. So like this video if you liked it. Comment what you want to learn or any other tips that go along with um, opposite EQing like we just did right now. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Like